Well, good evening, everybody, and welcome to First Baptist West Facebook Live, and we're coming to you live from the offices of First Baptist West, and as I always say, especially Elizabeth's desk, because I want to make sure everybody always knows that my desk doesn't look this nice. This is Elizabeth's work area, and she does a much better job at doing it than I am. Am I not turned on? I'm sure I'm not. There you go. All right, are we, are we loud now? Think that picked me up? Okay. Well, I hope it picked me up. But, uh, again, welcome to Facebook Live. Good to have everybody here with us tonight. Looking forward to a great program. Uh, as you, I do, would want to say that uh, tonight I'm doing this by myself. Uh, my my sidekick isn't here tonight uh, because uh, one thing that I I want you to understand: ever since that Kaylee has tucked her way onto the program, that girl has become a diva. And she's been very difficult to work with. And so tonight she's boycotting us because she's had now, as a, as a diva, she's been demanding a lot of different things. And, and so one of the things that she demanded was she wanted a dressing trailer like the movie stars have. And this is what she wanted. And so, of course, with the, with the budget of being zero dollars, I wasn't able to come up with this. So this is what I actually came up with for Kaylee. There you go. That's Kaylee's dresser, dressing room area. And she has decided, because I could not meet her needs, that that's what she's going to boycott tonight. And uh, not only that, but she wanted a catering service. She's wanted bottled water. She wants uh, time off, demanding time off like tonight. And uh, so... I'm here doing it by myself because I can't meet her needs. We're going to go into contract negotiations for next week and see if we can't uh, get her back here. Plus, not only that, uh, Kaylee, as, as many of you know, uh, was proposed to last weekend, so that even got her more of a diva. So, you know, bridezillas and stuff like that. You all know I'm kidding, right? Uh, that was a joke. And I even asked Kaylee for permission to joke about this sort of stuff. Uh, but no, she couldn't be here with us tonight. So I'm winging it by myself, and it's going to be, it's kind of difficult, but I, I think I'll make it. So it is good to have all of you here with us tonight, and thank you uh, for joining us. We have a great program. Uh, a couple of things that we have going on. We do have uh, uh, Rita Willoughby will be here from the Pregnancy Resource Center in just a little bit to talk to us about uh, what she's doing there, what's going on with them, and also an event that uh, this weekend we're going to start promoting and, and encouraging people to be a part of. So she'll be joining us here in just a few minutes. But a couple of announcements that was given to me before, uh, even after we made uh, the three things you should know that, that people have been texting me asking if I could promote. The first one is that tomorrow night WIT will be having their, uh, and their monthly meeting and it's going to start at 6 o'clock, and that's going to be here at the church. And so all the ladies, we want to encourage you to come tomorrow night and be here at the church. And they're going to have a meal, but it's like what they did last, uh, last month is we're not able to really serve meals here yet. Uh, that's coming up soon. But what we're going to do is ask all the ladies, if you want to stop wherever you are, grab you uh, something to eat, bring it with you, and then they're going to be sitting inside the church. Last week they sat outside, but it's been getting a little bit, uh, warm, so now they're going to be eating indoors. So tomorrow night, 6 o'clock, uh, we hope you'll join the ladies there for WIT, and they're going to have a great time together having a meal, uh, a meal of your choice, as a matter of fact, because you're going to get to stop and get whatever you want. The second thing that someone asked me to announce uh, is Jade, uh, my daughter Jade, as you all know, she's getting married, and so they're going to be having a wedding shower for her on August the 8th they're here at the church from 1030 to noon. So uh, Gina wanted me to make sure I announced that tonight. So as you uh, are being able to attend that, that we appreciate it very, very much. So anyway, those are a couple of announcements that we have. But now, as I mentioned, we have Rita Willoughby here. But later on in our after our Bible study tonight, we have uh, a segment where we're going to check in with uh, Patrick and Sadie. As many of you know, we called them uh, to be here at First Baptist West, and so we're looking forward to uh, them coming. But we're, we're going to drop in, check in on them before we uh, before we uh, get get uh, them here starting this weekend. So anyway, a lot going on. We're really excited to have you here. And so uh, before we get ready to hear, we want to go to three things that you should know. All right, three things that you should know about First Baptist West. Number one, we have Patrick and Sadie. As many of you know, we've called them, and they're going to be moving here this weekend. And so we're really excited about that, and we want to welcome them to, uh, to, uh, to our church. And uh, we're going to be having people, if you are able to, 
uh, on Saturday afternoon. We're going to be getting a group of people that will be here to unload uh, uh, the furniture and, and the housing belongings that they have. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take a group of guys down on Friday morning. We're going to leave here pretty early and we're going to be helping them load up and then getting them back here. So uh, Patrick and Sadie will be here. Now they'll be here this Sunday morning, but now Patrick isn't going to be leading worship as he has just spent the whole week loading and unloading and got a lot going on. So his first uh, Sunday will be a, in a week from this coming Sunday, then he'll be leading us in our worship. So we're really excited and God has blessed us by uh, allowing them to come and be a part of our church family. And we're going to be starting that and they'll be here this Saturday evening. So if you want to help us unload, we'd very much appreciate it. Number two, Sunday school small groups. We're about to start those back up on August the 16th. Now we're really excited about that over the, since March, basically we have not had any uh, of our Sunday school classes meeting in here. We've had one of our ladies group that has joined and started meeting on Wednesday. As a matter of fact, they had a meeting today. Uh, but we're going to start our small groups back. And that's going to be church-wide. And so we will uh, do social distancing. Uh, but also what we're going to be doing is we're going to continue uh, some of those classes that we're doing Zoom. They're going to continue that even though they're going to be meeting in their classroom. So if you're comfortable about joining in the class, then we want to encourage you to come and be a part of our Sunday school with us. But if you're still saying, you know what, we're not quite comfortable yet, well, we're still going to be able to Zoom in. So you'll be able to attend that Sunday school class via Zoom the same way we've done it. Now, we're going to make some changes starting on uh, the 16th with our times of our schedule. Uh, what we've been doing is since March, we've been having our first service instead of starting at 8 o'clock, it started at 8.30. Well, we've had such a good response from that, and so many people are beginning to come to that, that we're going to keep that at 8.30. And so, John, if you could put that schedule up for us, we're going to have our first service will start at 8.30 on that Sunday morning. Now, not this Sunday. Please understand, that's not until the 16th. So we'll have a service at 8.30, which we've been doing. But our Sunday school, which normally started at 9.30, we're going to move it to 9.45. Now, because of the way we've been doing things uh, with the Zoom, and now we're going to be having people uh, joining in at, at church, all the Zoom meetings will be at 9.30 as well, so all or 9.45. So all the Sunday school groups will gather at 9.45, and they'll go until 10.45 which will then move our second service, which starts at usually at 1045. We're going to start it now at 11 o'clock. And so we're trying to switch things around just a little bit uh, to accommodate more people to be able to come and be comfortable here at the time. So remember all that, we're social distancing. But Sunday school starts up again on August the 16th. And here again is our schedule. Now we're going to be putting that on our web page. We're putting that uh, on our Facebook page. It's going to be uh, announced on Sunday mornings all the way up until the 16th. But please understand, this will not happen until August the 16th of, on that Sunday morning, okay? That's number two. Number three, back to school. Man, it's time uh, to go be back to school. We're still waiting on announcements of how things are going to go for the school year. But one thing that we know for sure is we need to be praying for our school year. And just like we always do, on, the, on Sunday night, we're going to be having a back-to-school prayer rally. That's going to be August the 23rd at 6 o'clock. Now, we're going to gather here at the church. We're going to have a special worship time. Patrick uh, and I have been talking, and he's beginning to work on that and put everything together. So we're going to have a special rally for our schools. We're going to be praying uh, for our teachers, for our administrators, for our school, uh, for the kids. Uh, now, this also involves, we're going to be praying for uh, public school, we're going to be praying for private school and home schools, because we're, we, uh, we have people involved in all of that, and they all need our prayers. Now, one thing that we're going to do, so please remember this, is that starting Sunday morning, we're going to be collecting items for our teachers, just like what we've done the last couple of years. And so we're going to ask if you would get paper, copy paper, notebook paper, pens, pencils, all these different things that teachers uh, use in their classroom. And what we're going to do is after that service, we allow all of our teachers, again, private school, public school, and homeschool teachers, to go in and shop. And everything is free, provided by the members of First Baptist West to help them. Because as a former teacher myself, I know how much money teachers spend of their own salary 
for school supplies. So I've done it, I did it for 17 years, and so my heart is for our teachers and for our school system. So we want you to uh, help us out with that. And again, on the 23rd of August at 6 o'clock that evening, a special prayer service and rally for our schools, and then uh, a, a, a teachers will be able to shop. Now, we'll also be having our prayer lists as we had each year. Our teachers, can you can select a name or pick a name, and they will be your teacher that you'll pray for throughout the school year. So if you're, if you're a school teacher and you say, well, I really am not comfortable coming back to the live worship services, if you'll just contact the church, let us know. We'll get your name down. We'll get a card for you, and people will be getting those cards out for people to be praying for our teachers uh, throughout the school year. So please help us with that. And uh, we're really looking forward to a very, very special service that evening. So that's number three. So that's the three things that you should know here at First Baptist West, and we're excited about that. So let's get on with the rest of our program here. Tonight, as I shared with you, we have a special guest. Uh, Ms. Rita Willoughby is here with us, and she is from the uh, Pregnancy Resource Center here in Lawton, and she's been uh, the, uh, the working and the director of that for several years, and so we're honored to have you here. Thank you so here. much for being a part of our program tonight. Thank you for the invitation. It's an honor to be here. Well, good. We, we appreciate it, and, and you've been very patient with us, and we appreciate that, and, and we always look forward every time we get to have you <laughs> here in our church to speak and tonight's the first time that she's been on television with us and so <laughs> both of our nerves are a little bit on edge here we've both been talking about that but it's good thank you for coming with part how, how are things going for you things are going well we're we're busy life is full and busy amen we're back to being normal again okay well good good so uh, how, how long have you been director of the pregnancy resource center well um <clears throat> I have been with the Pregnancy Center since before it opened. In fact, we had the first volunteer training for our Pregnancy Center in January 1995, right here at First Baptist West. Oh, really? Yes. Okay. And so uh, out of that group, we had about 25 who signed up to volunteer and about three or four stuck you know, would stay uh -huh. with us. Right. And right. so uh, it's, that was 25 years ago. Um, so it's, I've been with the center quite a while. I had the privilege to see the first client. So God has been very good to us. He has met our needs above and beyond we ever dreamed. And uh, <clears throat> we're just really grateful. We're especially grateful for all that your church has done. You've been a, a true friend to our ministry. And so we're thankful and humble that you partner with us and support us Amen. in many, many ways. Well, it's our honor, and for many of you to know, we do support the Pregnancy Resource Center, and we have a lot of our people volunteer help, yes. uh, but we always need more. Yes, uh, so, we do. Uh, so, so how did you get into the Pregnancy Resource Center? Actually, we were sitting in church on a Wednesday night where we worship, and uh, a lady um, was speaking about the Crisis Pregnancy Center was getting mm -hmm. ready to open and going to have a volunteer training. And if anyone was interested, just go down to the Crisis Pregnancy Center uh, and pick up an application and uh, commit to that training, that five-day training. Back then it was a five-day training. And so we, uh, my husband leaned over and said, I think that's something you need to do. Okay. And so the rest is history. And uh, it's been a an amazing ministry that God has allowed us to volunteer in and to be a part of. Right. Well, you do a great job, and, and like I said, we're honored to get to be a part of that. How have things changed over the years? I know one of the things is I keep getting in trouble because I always want to call it the Crisis Pregnancy Center, and that's what it used to be called. Correct. Uh, but now, people, every time I get ready to say it's a crisis, I'm like, no, wait a minute, it's the Pregnancy Resource Center. So other than the name, how have you seen things change over the last few years or several years even? Well, we started out uh, in a donated office area. A doctor donated an office uh -huh. space for us. And from there, we moved to a, a home and had our offices in a home. And we began praying and asking God to expand our tent of ministry. And he did just that. And we were able to apply for some grants. And through those grant funds, we were able to get into three different counties in mm -hmm. Southwest Oklahoma in their middle schools and their high schools. 
and present abstinence until marriage. And it was an, it's an amazing program. It's called Teen Choices. And so uh, that's a big change that came, yeah, right. us adding that. And then we outgrew that space and we looked at a building on the west side of town and we landed there. And when we landed there, God began to move in our hearts about uh, converting to a medical facility and adding ultrasound. Okay. And we added ultrasound, we had a training and had two nurses trained and we began uh, the medical clinic ultrasounds and God has used it mightily to show women and families the truth regarding life and the unborn that it is a baby and that it right. does have a beating heart. Amen. Just teeny tiny inside the mother's womb and so it it has enhanced, it has broadened our ministry and been a an incredible part that we embrace and love. Mm -hmm. How has the the COVID-19 outbreak, how has that affected the ministry there at, at the Pregnancy Resource Center? Well, we were just all kind of in shock in the beginning. And so most of the other staff stayed home, uh, volunteers, uh, we had them stay at home. And uh, myself and Elizabeth would go into the center. She would come maybe one day a week, but I'd go in almost every day. Right. I had the phone all the time, so we didn't miss any calls. And if women were considering abortion, we would meet them at the front door of the center while we were closed and hand them a packet of information regarding uh, abortion procedures, its risk, and other options that we would want them to consider. Right. And we would also pass out diapers and formula and other items that uh, mommies would need for their babies. Right. So has it kind of have you opened back up a little? Oh, more we're full. We're full, full throttle, throttle now. Throttle yes, now. Okay. we're we're going. And you, so you're taking appointments. I know you mentioned earlier that you already have some appointments going. And oh yes. Oh yeah. We've had appointments uh, since we decided to open the doors. God has been so faithful to send uh, families in need to us so that we could love on them and present the truth in love. All right. So do you see? Do you see that being able to open up? has allowed more people to be a part and your ministries have been picked up even more than what it was before? I don't know that it's picked up more, but it sure has picked up to where it was. And, okay, and good, we've, we've added a, an advertising company to help us with Google ads and word searches oh, and all okay, that. And so okay. that has really helped us with women who are getting online and looking for abortions. They, they call our number. Okay, So right. well good. And so now, uh, volunteers. We always need you always volunteers. need volunteers. Yes. So, yes, yes. what are some qualifications for a volunteer? As some of what maybe some of our viewers are wanting to be a volunteer, what what are qualifications? Because some people say, I don't know that I could am qualified to do that. Okay. First of all, I want to say we never make referrals for abortion. I said we give them abortion education. Uh, we never make referrals or uh, suggest abortion. We're right. always. Uh, upholding the sanctity of human life. Amen. Volunteers, uh, just uh, passionate about life, mm -hmm. uh, can handle the Word of God. Know, they know where to go to for scriptures. If not, in the training, they'll learn all that. Mm -hmm. uh, they just have to have a heart for life, for the unborn, and uh, just really position themselves, make themselves available, and God does the rest. He, he equips the called. And so if you sense a calling on your life, we need you. Amen. We really need you. All right. Very good. And so if anyone's watching and you say, you know what, I, I think I could help a little bit, mm -hmm. you can call the Pregnancy Resource Center or you can call here at the church. If mm -hmm. you're a member of our church or you want, then we can get you uh, connected because, again, we have several of our members mm -hmm. uh, who are a part of the ministry there at the Pregnancy Resource Center. And we're honored to get to be a part of that as well. Well, one of the reasons that I really wanted to have you on is, is you shared a lot with the Pregnancy Resource Center and we want to ab absolutely get that out there. But the uh, Walk for Life is a fundraiser that you do that our church helps out with a lot. Yes. And so I wanted to bring you on and ask you, uh, have you talk about uh, the Walk for Life that is uh, available. We have brochures and all the information available. So uh, anybody that wants to be a part of this Walk for Life uh, real, if you if you don't mind taking a moment, uh, explain what the Walk for Life is. Okay, we have two. Ma we are totally donor supported. We receive mm -hmm. no government right. funding. People right. used to think we receive funds from Focus on the Family, but we don't. 
It's uh, churches, individuals, some grants. And so our two major fundraisers each year is the Spring Walk for Life, and it just didn't pan out when we had it scheduled. Right, it's right. usually the Saturday before Mother's Day, and uh, it was just, uh, we didn't get approval for it. So we had to reschedule it. And mm-hmm. so now we have scheduled our Walk for Life for Saturday, August 15. Okay. Registration begins, the actual walk begins at nine. It kicks off and uh, walks shortly thereafter. We're gonna ask that everybody come with a mask and, and respect the social distancing rule. Right. because okay. uh, there's people with health concerns. And so right. we want to respect that and encourage that. So we have the spring walk, we have the fall fundraiser banquet, and we have no idea if it's gonna happen yet. Right. So right. the walk is really, it's to raise funds, but it's also a friend raiser to make our community aware of what all services we're able to offer. Such, and they're all free, uh, confidential, um, pregnancy test, uh, options, discussions, um, ultrasounds. If you get a positive test and uh, need an ultrasound, we have an amazing uh, men's ministry that just started up and we're so thankful for our volunteers there. And we have a bright course curriculum that families can sign up for and attend classes and earn the items that they need Uh, for their baby, like a crib, mattress, uh, walker, stroller, all those items, a playpen, plus diapers, formula, clothing, and all those other needs that mommies have for their babies. And so it's it's a discipleship program is really what it is. And so they can choose topics that they want to study or we can visit with them and, and suggest topics. And they can even download the studies on their phone we have Bible studies that correlate to the subject that they'll be mm-hmm. uh, studying that particular week. So it's a great program. Right. Uh, the and, and a program. lot of that then is why we do the Walk for Life. It's exactly why important. we do the Walk. Yes. Well, we have a, a short video that okay. we want to play Good. Uh, to advertise that. So, John, if you would, let's go ahead and roll that video. On your mark, get set, go for life. Your local pregnancy center is making big headlines in the news for life. That's right. Volunteers and staff are gearing up for one of the most life-saving events of the year, the annual Walk for Life. Your participation gives life to your community and helps your center in providing an incredible opportunity to raise awareness and save lives. Did you know each year, 1.2 million women in America choose abortion to end their unplanned pregnancies? It is reported that more than 3,000 lives are lost to abortion each day. You can take charge and be part of the positive change in the news. With your efforts and the efforts of your local center, you can begin to spread the news of hope and life bringing an end to the hopelessness felt by those helpless and hurting. Each year, your local pregnancy center hosts this event to raise awareness and provide much needed services to those men and women. Sign up today. Ask everyone you know. By encouraging friends and family to walk for life or to be your sponsor, you will be providing much needed accurate information and compassionate assistance. Don't forget to stay connected with your local pregnancy center. Stay up to date with the latest center news and events. By spreading the news, you remind your community and the world that life matters. So as you see, with the last few minutes we have left, I wanted to really emphasize the need uh, for people to register for the walk of life. And Arita, during the video, you were talking about uh, how to register and why we need registrants and what, what that what that's all about. So if you would just quickly talk to us about okay. the walk for life registration. Sure. Uh, your church in the foyer, most churches in the foyer have this these brochures. Pick up one and 
fill it out, please, and give your uh, your church liaison is Ed Peterson. Is Ed that Peterson, right? Yes, he will give, be out there this Sunday. As okay, a this fact. Sunday. So give Ed Peterson. You register as a walker and tear this first part of this brochure off and give it to Brother Ed, and he will get it to us. It gives us all of your information so that we can get them registered on our website. Right. Okay, and they'll be able to add their walker, their uh, supporters. So we need sponsored walkers. We okay. need walkers who are recruiting people to donate for them as they walk. So if I sign up, then I, I would be a registered walker. Then what I would do is have people sponsor that's me. That's exactly right. As a walker. You're right? exactly right. Okay. All yeah, right. That's so what. That's the that, goal. So we're needing. We're needing sponsored both of those, walkers. Right? Now you had also mentioned the numbers. You mentioned yes. some numbers to me that kind of blew my mind just a minute ago. So I want you okay. to take a few moments to okay. share okay. the numbers. Last year we had 146 sponsored walkers. So far this year we have recorded 20 sponsored walkers. Last year we raised $47,000 through the Walk for Life, pre-walk, walk day, and post-walk. This year, pre-walk, we have raised $3,255, so a big difference there. So our greatest need, of course, is sponsored walkers, yes. but we need prayer covering for that day too, for good weather, Amen. for right. a good response, for people to be enthusiastic about the opportunity to put their pro-life beliefs into action. Right. And so those are the things that are really urgent needs. Amen. So folks, as you see, that's why we sponsor uh, the Pregnancy Resource Center, and that's why we want to push the Walk for Life, because as you see, there is a great need, and the COVID has affected a lot of different things, and this is one of those things that we can't not focus on, uh, because these this literally saves unborn lives. It Amen. saves lives. Yes. And as Rita mentioned, that uh, we, the Pregnancy Resource Center gets no government funding. That's the other side that gets the government funding. That's right. And so we're dependent upon people sponsoring and helping. So yes. please, uh, this Sunday morning, uh, we'll have these out in our lobby. If you want to call the church and register, you can do that. Uh, but Ed Peterson will be uh, overseeing that for us starting Sunday morning. We only have a couple of Sundays. That's right. So we need to get the word out as, as quickly as we can. And this, again, is very, very important. So please be in prayer about what God is going to have you do for the walk of life for the Pregnancy Resource Center. And that, again, is, is, is August. Saturday, August 15th. Saturday, August 15th. So please help us out with that. Elmer Thomas Park. Yes. And so we're, we're excited about it. Do you mind uh, if I pray over you before oh. we go? And I really thank you for coming tonight. Need, I need prayer. Yes, that All will right. be Well, let, let me pray over you, and then, then we'll get ready to step out. Father, in Jesus' name. God, we come to you and we thank you for your love and your grace. God, thank you for, for life. And Father, we are living in a day where life does not seem to have the value that it, it used to have. And Father, decisions are being made uh, with wrong information. So I thank you for Rita. I thank you for the Pregnancy Resource Center, Lord, that is that you have placed in Lawton to assist people, to give them the truth, give them information, show them Christ, show them love, and not judgment, Father. And so I, I thank you for the lives that I know that have been changed, the lives that I know that have been saved through this ministry. And God, I thank you that you allow First Baptist West to be a, a, a part of this. And Lord, I thank you for the people of our, men, of our church who, um, who volunteer. And Lord, I pray for them to continue to have that heart. But now, Lord, I, I pray over Rita, I pray over her family, and ask God that you uh, grant her peace, strength, and encouragement. And God, just continue to anoint her with your power. And Father, I pray for this event. Lord, I know uh, that there are enemies who do not want this to happen. But Father, I pray that you would open doors for this. I pray that you would provide uh, people to walk, that you would provide sponsors to to sponsor the walkers. That, Lord, we could see the numbers of walkers go up. We could see the, the, the money values go up. And that, God, we could even see you do greater things than happened last year. And that, Father, you would make it a beautiful day. That, God, you would uh, bind Satan away from it. That the COVID virus, Lord, that you would make it uh, ineffective. And that, Father, people could come and, and know that we're, we're walking for life. We're sponsoring life. So, Father, we turn this event over to you right now. We pray your hands be all over that. 
And God, you just work it to your glory and to your honor. And Father, again, we thank you for Rita. Thank you for allowing us to be together tonight on this program. And Lord, we look forward to what you're going to be doing. Mm -hmm. And Father, it is in the name of Jesus I pray. Amen. Amen. Rita, thank, thank you. you again for thank being you. a part of this show. And folks, please remember that we want to see you uh, helping us out with this Walk for Life. Uh, as we get ready to go into our Bible study time, we hope that you're ready for that. And I do want to mention that uh, Kaylee has been watching and she has put on here, many of you have seen, that all she really wants is to be my co-host, <laughs> not my sidekick. We'll see. All right. But anyway, hey, let's go ahead. And as soon as we get done with our Bible study, we'll come back and we'll drop in with uh, Patrick and Sadie <clears throat> and see how things are going with them. Okay. So let's go ahead and, and join in with our Bible study, if you don't mind. Hi, as we get ready to start our Bible study tonight, I will just uh, let you see that we're in a different spot than what we normally are. I usually do it from the sanctuary, but tonight we're going to be doing it from my office as we're going to here in just a little while I'll be visiting uh, with Patrick and Sadie uh, online. So we're going to be able to do it in here. Since I don't have a, a sidekick, well then we, we, we have plenty of room to do that. But tonight what I wanted to do is I wanted to talk to you a little bit about uh, a specific thing of, of how we uh, sometimes lose hope and that sometimes we feel like we've gotten so far away and maybe even as a nation we might get a little concerned about uh, how far our nation has gotten away from God and is there hope. Well tonight what I want to do is I want to share a couple thoughts with you from our scripture and it's found in the book of uh, 2 Chronicles chapter 33 and it's going to be verses 10 through 13 so let me read that uh, for you if I can. It says, And the Lord spoke to Manasseh and his people but they would not listen. Therefore the Lord brought upon them the captains of the army of the king of Syria, who took Manasseh with hooks, bound him with bronze fetters, and, and carried him off to Babylon. Now, when he was in affliction, he implored to the Lord his God, and he humbled himself greatly before the God of his fathers. And he prayed to him, and he received his entreaty, and heard his supplications, and brought him back to Jerusalem into his kingdom. Then Manasseh knew that the Lord was God. So what we have here is, is I want to look at a couple of things. First of all, uh, Manasseh sounds like a, a normal guy who kind of got off track. But what I want you to understand is when it said here in verse uh, 10, uh, and he spoke to Manasseh and his people, but they would not listen. Uh, what happened was Manasseh was the king of Judah. And he had gotten in such a way that he was so far away from God. And uh, some of the things that he did was the Bible described him as, as wicked than any other person. As a matter of fact, it even described him as just as bad as Ahab, which was in Israel. And so what some of the things that uh, Manasseh had done that God kept saying, don't do this, don't do this, was that Manasseh did a couple things. One, he practiced uh, sorcery. The Bible says that he consulted with mediums and psychics, and he began to worship other gods, and he began to, to bow down before him. And the Bible says that he even took uh, his son and sacrificed him in fire. And then to top all of that off, the third thing that he did was the Bible says that he took and inside the very temple of God, that Solomon had built for God, Manasseh took images of other gods and placed them in the center of the temple of God's place and began to worship them there. And so we see that God had been telling them, don't do this. And man, it looked like he was a long ways from God and that there was no hope. As a matter of fact, uh, the Bible says here that God allowed judgment on Manasseh and on Judah. And so what happened here in the text was that after God passed judgment, the Babylonian king came and captured the city and took Manasseh and paraded him, if you will, uh, before his people and, and into Babylon and even took him by, by hooks in his nose. And that's how uh, conquering kings would treat other kings as they would pull them through the cities and basically humiliate them. And so this was God's judgment on Manasseh. And so we see here that uh, things were not very good at this point. So we would question, did Manasseh cross a line? And had he drifted so far away from God that and judgment had even come upon Manasseh that nothing could be done? But we see here in this next verse, now when he had the affliction, he implored upon the Lord his God and humbled himself greatly before the God of his fathers. So we see here that what happened was through this affliction, through this judgment, Manasseh began to realize who God was. And the Bible says he humbled himself before God. And he began to implore God to, to help him, 
to basically be the God of his life again. Now, I have some people that would probably say, well, was it just because he was captured? Possibly. Possibly that's what got his attention and turned him back to God. But what we need to understand was he wasn't just saying words because the Bible tells us that God knows the manner of the heart. So if we say things that we don't really mean, God doesn't listen to those. So when Manasseh realized what he had done in his life, how far away he had gotten from God, the Bible says he humbled himself before God. And so what God then did is he heard him, which means that he received those prayers because he knew in his heart that Manasseh was real. Manasseh was sincerely uh, forsaking this other life and turning his life back over to God. So my friends, listen to me. Tonight, no matter where we are, no matter what's going on in our lives, no matter where our nation is, we're not too far away that God cannot hear us if we call upon his name. So we say, well, then is it just because we want things to be good again? Well, see, God would know the difference of that. If you're doing it sincerely, because he says, if you seek me with all of your heart, seek after me with all of your heart, you will find me. That means God will reveal himself to us. So we look and we see that no matter how far we fall, God is able to, to hear us. God is able to reach us. As a matter of fact, not, as, not only is he able to, oh, but my friend, listen to me, he's willing to. God is willing to hear your call. He's willing to hear the call of our nation. He's willing to come and, 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 and take care of us and bring us back into his fellowship. And then I love how that text ended. It says, if we look, Manasseh knew, then Manasseh knew that the Lord was God. Whenever he called out to God and God responded to him, the Bible basically is telling us that Manasseh from that point on knew who God was. He'd only heard of him before. Maybe he had only heard of things his dad had done. But we see here that he knew him. My friends, I, I believe it's time that the church begin to proclaim that we know who God is. That we have yielded ourselves to him. And not only that in our church life, but in our own personal lives. Maybe you're watching today, or maybe you know of someone who we may have done, like Manessa, we'd have probably written him off and said, well, he's too far gone. My friends, maybe you know someone, or maybe, again, you're that person that you feel maybe too far gone. I'm here to tell you that if you'll humble yourselves before God, he will hear you, and he will draw you back into fellowship. If you're, if you're uh, away from God and you've never received him into your life, you can have him tonight. If you'll just call on his name, ask him to forgive you of your sin, come into your heart and to save you, to yield yourself to him. My friend, he'll do that. And then let's also pray for our nation. Our nation needs Jesus. We need peace tonight. We need unity tonight. That's only going to come through the idea of Jesus Christ. So tonight, can we begin to pray for our nation, pray for our leaders, pray for our community, pray for God's wisdom to be on all of us. And if we will humble ourselves before God, and I promise you, then we're going to get to come back through this. And just as Manasseh did, we humble ourselves greatly before God. And then we can know that God, the Lord was God. That's what I pray for tonight. So I hope that's been an encouragement to you to not get down, not to give up hope, not to turn away, but to just keep following after God. Pray for people around you. Pray for your family. Pray for First Baptist West as we continue to minister. Pray for our leaders in our community, in our state, and in our nation, and then pray for God to heal our land. Let me pray with you, and then we'll get back with our program. Father, in Jesus' name, we come to you, and we thank you for your blessing. Thank you, God, for loving us enough that even when we, we fall, Lord, that you don't write us off, as we see here with Manasseh, that God, he had done some things that we would have probably just said, there's no way. No way, God, that you could reach him. Lord, we see that he turned his life back to you. And Father, you restored him. So I pray for restoration for our families. I pray for restoration for our community. I pray and claim restoration for our nation. That Father, you would do a mighty work for us. That God, we could be humbling ourselves before you. And God, you would use this church to reach people, to proclaim the message of Jesus Christ. 
God, we love you. We thank you. And we thank you for this program tonight. And Lord, it is in through Jesus' name I pray all of this. Amen. All right, let's get back to our program and we'll check in with Sadie and Patrick. God bless you. Well, hi, everybody. Welcome back to our program. We appreciate you joining in with our Bible study uh, and just wanted to be an encouragement to you tonight. But we have a special segment here now, and we're going to drop in with uh, Patrick and Sadie and see how they're doing as they get ready to move in. So, uh, guys, how are y'all doing tonight? We're doing yeah. good. Hope y'all are. <laughs> we're, do we're doing great. Said, uh, But uh, as you said earlier, that you, you guys have been pretty busy packing, right? How's that been oh, going? Oh, yeah. Our house. Our house is full of boxes. You can't you can't move without running into a box. So, but I guess that's a good thing. We got a head start. That's right. That's right. Well, and then what else is so bad is it hadn't been that long ago that you did this before, right? And now you turn around that's and doing right. it again. So I hate moving. I hope I hope y'all like us because we don't want to move again. So well, you know that's exactly what I told them whenever I uh, whenever I came in view of a call and they they voted to have us. I said, now look. One thing you need to know is I don't move. I don't move often. So you better yeah. make really sure you want me because I'm not leaving. And until hey, God I'm with you there. And so here nine years later, I hope they're still happy because we're not, we're still not moving. So, <laughs> so we're, we are banking on the fact that you guys are going to pack, move here, and this is where you're going to be. How's that well, sound? That's, that's the plan. Oh, good. Well, that's what we're wanting. So uh, how, how y'all been doing since we saw you last just a few weeks ago? Well, we've been doing pretty well. Uh, just, you know, it's always hard when you're uh, when you have to tell a church that you're leaving, you know, to um, make that break and everything, explain that to people. So that hasn't been fun. But, um, you know, uh, people have received it well and they've been very gracious um, so it's been stressful, but at the same time, we're excited. So that's, that's really kind of keeping us going. Oh, very good. Very good. Well, how are the kids doing? Well, they're good. Uh, you know, I don't think they really understand what's happening right now. Uh, they just kind of doing things the way they always do. In fact, right. if you see a half naked five-year-old come running in here in a minute and take over the, the call, I wouldn't be surprised. Because uh, he's in I there on his tablet right now. <laughs> trying to keep him busy. Say, son, just stay right there. Don't move. Yes. Years go. So everything's wrong. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're just going to stand here and watch. No. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll keep going. We'll keep going. So Sadie, how are you doing? I'm good. Honestly, outside of packing, I've been pretty bored because me staying at home is not not fun. I'm ready for the world to open up again. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I can understand that. So you, have you been one designated with a lot of the packing? Yes, I've done the majority of it. Whether he agrees or not, I've done the majority of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's usually how it goes though, right? Well, it's been, it's been a team effort, I feel like. But if, if you were weighing it out, she probably has tipped the scale a little bit. Usually we, we like to call it a team effort when we realize that we haven't done the most. That's what I really <laughs> like. we call it a team effort. The thing that I found out in my life with my wife and my daughters is that it's a team effort if they did most of it, but it's a team <laughs> effort on my part if I've done most of it. I take credit for it, right? That, that's right. That's how it works. They got to understand. <laughs> so, so team effort. So say you excited about making the move, getting up here this next weekend? I am. I'm very excited. I can't wait. Um, I look forward to being at church and I look forward to going to Target. <laughs> well, uh, one thing about it, see if you if you had moved on this side of town, Target was just right here, but now you got to drive all the way across a lot. I know. It's It'll be worth it. <laughs> closer than what you're used to having, right? It's better than an hour, yeah. which is what we have right now. Uh, that's the way we were when we lived in Tipton or Milfay. When we went to Walmart, it was a 25-minute trip there, pull in wow. the parking lot and come back. So it was an hour if you just went to the parking lot and came home. So, yeah, we're, wow. we're kind of happy. We're just like two and a half blocks to, to Walmart. Yeah. So yeah. You, know, you take it for granted. Yeah, oh, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> so uh, you, you guys will be moving in on moving up here on Saturday, right? 
Right. And what we have. In. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I was just going to say we should be getting in sometime late afternoon, hopefully. Right. Right. Well, I know that we. Ha- I'm coming down, and John and. Uh, I think we've got about six of us coming down uh, Friday morning. We're going to leave here really early Friday morning, and then we'll get down there and, and uh, hopefully get something done uh, for the evening and then finish up on Saturday morning and hopefully get, get on our way back pretty quickly. So uh, I do know that we also have some people that have said they would be willing uh, to get here. So uh, when you, when we all get back, they're going to be here to help us unload. So we're hoping that uh, you guys will see that we really do want y'all here. We're trying to, we're doing everything we can to make sure y'all get up here. So uh, well, and we appreciate that. <laughs> Lady wasn't looking forward to having to carry that couch by herself. You know, so. <laughs> yep, team effort, all right? Me. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> yeah, all of it. But that's that's when you get good dollies. That's what you need, good dollies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that so, too. So you're you're going to be here on Saturday, um, and of course, I want to encourage. Uh, everybody, if you want to help us unload, we'll be back, as Patrick said, Friday or Saturday afternoon, hopefully not real late, uh, depending on what time we get out of there. Uh, but we'll be giving ETAs on Facebook and web pages, all that, so people can keep track of where it is that we're going to be uh, and what time we're going to get here so people can help us out. So Saturday, you're, you're going to be here. Uh, Sunday, you're going to actually be in church, but you won't be leading in worship, right? Right. We'll, we'll just be uh, participating in worship. That's something we don't get to do often. So. Well, and that would that'd be pretty nice. That, uh, we hope it'll be pretty nice for you just to not worry. Hey, it's not your problem if the sound goes down. It's not your problem. If anything. <laughs> hey, boy, they should have done a better job. That, that's why you can look at it. Uh, but then you'll, you'll, be, you'll be kicking it in on the next Sunday, though, right? The night. Okay, good. Well, I know everyone's looking forward to it, and, and I know all the ladies say you're looking forward to, to getting you up here and, and uh, just getting to know you a lot better. So what, what's up for the next few days for y'all? Well, I still have to pack up my office at work, which is not going to be pleasant, but uh, I'm going to take a few boxes tomorrow, and that should take most of the day. And then, um, you know, Friday's coming, so we got to get the truck and um, then we'll be looking forward to uh, seeing you guys Friday afternoon or evening, and hopefully we can make light work of it and just get all this over with. Yeah, we'll, we'll do all that we possibly can. We want to help you as much as we can. So once you get here, kind of what what, what are your thoughts about when, when you will get in the house and all that? Do you know yet? Well, so uh, right now the plan is, uh, and uh, Ed and Gene, if you're watching, thank you so much. The plan is we're going to stay with them until we close on our house and closing should be August 15th, uh, which is a Saturday. And uh, so just two weeks and, um, and hopefully all that goes smoothly and uh, we'll get, we'll get moved in, get settled. And Sawyer, our five-year-old or will be five, his birthday is actually August 13th. So we're just telling him he's getting a new house for his birthday. You know. (laughs) <laughs> there you go. I, that, that'd be what a gift, man. But hey, when he turns the next, when he turns six, he's gonna be. Wait a minute, I got a house last year. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, that'll, that'll be hard to follow. <laughs> right. So, Sadie, you looking forward to your new house? I am. I am. I'm, and I actually have a friend coming a couple of weeks after we move in to help us decorate, which I'm even more excited about. <laughs> Oh, there you go. Well, I know uh, I, my, my wife and I, Martha and I drove over to look at it. And so you, you, they, they, probably the people in the neighborhood wondered, why are all these people, where are all these cars coming from? But all of our members were, hey, you know where the house is. We're going to go look at it and see. So I think everyone was excited uh, to have y'all. And, and you got a nice place. And so we're, we're, we're really excited for you. Uh, to do that. So now, Patrick, we do have uh, something coming up. I know you and I talked and what was really cool. You said, hey, I've got an idea for back to school and we've already uh, we already do that. So what are you looking for? Your first, I guess, other than worship time, your big event is our back to school prayer rally. So you, you got any thoughts on that? Well, I, I, you know, we haven't talked about it a whole lot, so I don't know what you already kind of had planned, but uh, sort of what the Lord's laid on my heart is just uh, a blessing over our children and our families, because, you know, if you're anything like me, this is going to be um, 
I mean, it kind of hurts my heart to send my kids back out there because uh, there's so much uncertainty and everything. So for me, right. it's just going to be a time uh, praying that the Holy Spirit will come and just give us a sense of peace and uh, and then just, just sing and pray a blessing over uh, the families and the children as we send them back out uh, into the school world. Well, good. Well, we're looking forward to it. We, we've done that in the past and and uh, we, we, we are looking forward to the new dimension you'll add to what we normally do. And we're looking forward to that. I do want you to know that after the weekend that you guys came and do a call, uh, man, we got a lot of great compliments, a lot of things. People say, man, that was a great time of worship. And uh, they were really excited. So I, I want you to know people are honestly ready uh, for you to get here um, and, and just continue to lead us in, in our praise and worship and minister to us. So. Uh, we're ready. To have we're excited. We're ready. Well, good. We're ready for you. We're looking forward to it. And I know y'all have a lot to do. I know you got practice here uh, as well. So we didn't want to take up too much time. We just wanted to drop in and check in on you and see how things were going. And we look forward to uh, to Friday. I guess I'll see you, uh, both of you and your kids on Friday afternoon. We'll be there. We're, I think we're going to try to leave here about six o'clock in the morning. So we'll be there hopefully fairly early in the afternoon. Get a lot of work done for you. Yeah, well, that sounds good. Hey, the one thing I'm disappointed about, though, tonight, I was really looking forward to having your, um, is it co-host uh, on here with yeah. us? So, Yeah, well, she, she, I've been telling everybody tonight that she is, uh, she's become a diva. And so she, it's getting kind of hard <laughs> uh, for her to, uh, to show up whenever she's required. She does it when she wants to. That so, happens. Yeah. yeah. You'll you'll have to you'll you'll see her next week when we do it again. Hopefully hopefully we can renegotiate her contract and she can get on and come and join us next week. We'll see. Oh, but All also right. you know she she did uh, she did get proposed to this past weekend, so that kind of upped her up a little bit more. So, man. I'm yes, I heard about that. Yeah, it's just it's tough working with her, man. I'm telling you, no, she's great. <laughs> <laughs> she's great. As a matter of fact, I even asked permission to make so much fun of her. I, I made sure she was okay with me teasing her so much. So, but <laughs> you'll be able to join in next week and see see her again and uh, see how all this is done live. So we'll be looking forward to it. Yeah. Well, hey, thank you all for coming on and letting us visit with you just a little bit and check in. We hope we didn't take too much of your time. And you have a great evening. And can I pray over y'all real quick before we close out? Please do. Okay. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for today. Thank you, God, for uh, just your great blessings upon this church. And Lord, I thank you for drawing us and drawing Patrick and Sadie to us as well. And and Lord, I, I just I look forward to uh, getting them here and, and getting them part of the church and ministering through uh, what you have for them. God, I pray for strength and encouragement for them tonight. And over the next few days, I pray for for patience for them is Lord packing and loading is never fun. And so Lord, I pray that you would just grace them with your peace. And Lord, then as we travel down Friday and then come back Saturday, I pray for safety for all of us. And God, I pray that it'd be the beginning of a great, great time of fellowship and uh, getting to be friends and co-workers and co-ministers. And Lord, I just look forward to you blessing us through them and also blessing them through us. So we look forward to it. And God, we're excited about it. And we will give you praise for all that you're going to do. And Father, it is in the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 Hey, guys, thank you all for uh, for coming on with me tonight. I had a great time. And, and if it's this fun, this distance, man, we're going to have a great time when you actually get here to be in person. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, thank you. And uh, we'll be seeing you all Friday then. OK. All right. I'll to everyone you, else, we want to. To everyone else, we want to thank you for joining us tonight. And hopefully next week, I, as I said, I can get Kaylee back on here and, and she'll be joining us again. And we're going to have a great time together. But we want to encourage you to join us Sunday morning uh, at 1045 for our services or 830 here and live. But if not, then if you can join us at 1045 on our uh, live stream, we're going to have a great time of worship. We're going to celebrate the Lord Jesus Christ. So thank you for joining us in our program tonight. Have a great evening. God bless you. And remember, we're at First Baptist West where we love God, we love people, and we want to see lives changed. God bless you. Have a good night.